So what you're seeing right here is called Continuous Fiber 3D Printing, or CF3D for short. Many of you have probably never seen something like this before, but this is the start of the next industrial revolution as it combines all the advantages of composites with the 3D printing process. So let's look into how that happens. When I say composites, the definition of composites is combining two dissimilar materials together to create a material that is superior to the individual parts. So a good analogy would be concrete with rebar makes a strong structure that's not gonna break apart very easily. So when I say composites, the most common composite material that many of us are aware of is carbon fiber. And that's taking a dry fiber with a resin, it's cured into a hard carbon fiber part that is then very lightweight, yet stronger than metals. So when I say carbon fiber to you, what comes to mind? Is it lightweight? Is it expensive? Or maybe it's a really sexy carbon fiber product like you see on this screen right here. So if you're anything like me, and you saw a carbon fiber bike like that, and you took a look at the price tag, you almost had a mini heart attack because you couldn't believe how much it costs. So if we didn't know any different, we would think that the reason that bike that's all carbon fiber costs so much is the cost of the individual materials themselves. But that's not the case. Right now, we only find carbon fiber in really high-end applications like aerospace, Formula One, um, high-end motorsports, uh, and premium products because the cost of manufacturing with composites. These are the types of applications that can really benefit from light weighting the vehicle, and they can absorb those high manufacturing costs. So every time that 787 all-carbon fiber aircraft flies, it's getting a return on investment because of the fuel savings, and it's reducing carbon emissions. So those are the types of industries that gain the benefit from that light weighting of the vehicle and therefore can justify that additional manufacturing costs. So let's take a look at traditional composites manufacturing. Imagine I'm trying to build an airfoil, which is a fancy name for an airplane wing, and I want to make it in carbon fiber. I first have to start with a mold that's the shape of that airplane wing. So that's a whole design and manufacturing process in itself. When I'm ready to make my carbon fiber part, I have to use materials that are typically called prepregs, which is an entire manufacturing process in itself, where you take dry carbon fiber, it's saturated, it's then spooled, and it has to be kept under a frozen condition during transportation to the manufacturer's warehouse. It has to be kept under frozen conditions at the manufacturer's warehouse until it's ready to be used to make that composite part. So that takes these aerospace-grade fibers and resins that in their raw form are about $5 to $10 a pound, and it gets them up to $2,000 per pound to manufacture with this composite part because of that costly prepreg process. So now that I have this really costly material on rolls, I actually lay it out on a, on a flat surface, and you cut shapes out similar to a cookie cutter. And all of the leftover material after you remove those shapes is all scrap. There's upwards of 30% material waste when you're building with composite materials. Then you take those shapes and you lay those shapes over the mold, and that mold with that prepreg material is inserted into an autoclave, as you see in the lower right picture here. And those autoclaves are essentially a massive pressure cooker that applies pressure to consolidate the material and heat to cure that resin and convert it from the liquid to the solid state. And so you can imagine, if I'm trying to manufacture a commercial airplane wing, I have to have an autoclave the size of the wing itself. These are tens of millions of dollars machines that are then have hundreds of million dollar buildings built around them just to manufacture an airplane wing itself. After the long eight to 12 hour cure cycle, that mold is removed and you have to manually pull the part off of the mold where the molds reuse to make additional parts. Then you have trimming of the edges, you have additional waste, additional costs, but you also have to now reinforce that airplane skin. This part that you see right here, you could not put this embedded stiffening into an airplane skin all in one piece because you have to have a void to insert the mold and then remove the mold. So those are additional composite parts that are manufactured using that same process I just described 
They make all the additional support structures. They manually assemble it. They manually fasten it together. And that leads to a very costly process to manufacture with all composite material. So we have a good understanding of traditional composites now. Let's take a look at 3D printing. Traditional 3D printing started back in the 1980s, and it was known as rapid prototyping. And that's because it was good for exactly that, building prototypes quickly so you could design something on a computer, you could then bring it into the 3D printer, and you could create it in a relatively quick time. But it didn't have a lot of promise when it came to production parts for several reasons. The way traditional 3D printing works is you take a filament of plastic, it comes into the head where it's melted and a small bead of melted plastic is deposited onto a surface where it's cooled and the machine deposits small beads of plastic layer by layer to build up a three-dimensional object. This is an example of an airfoil that we printed on a traditional FDM 3D printer. It's really cool because I could design it and then come back tomorrow and I could have my part physically here. But this took 20 hours to print. And it's limited to the size of the machine itself. You can kind of see the size of the machines in this screen. So your build volume is very limited. The materials are weak. And it's not very scalable because it's such a slow process. But the technology is very cool in that you, you can create something from the digital world to the physical world very quickly. So if we can solve the problems in 3D printing with weak materials, slow process, and not scalable, we have a very promising technology. And that's exactly what continuous fiber 3D printing does. It takes the power of these composite materials with their extremely lightweight yet very strong characteristics and combines it with a 3D printing process. So this is a spool of dry carbon fiber. This is the exact same carbon fiber that you find in airplanes like the 787 that I was showing you. The way continuous fiber 3D printing works is it takes this dry fiber off of the spool, it comes into the print head and it's impregnated with a UV curable resin. So we've completely eliminated that costly pre-preg manufacturing process. Our software controls the robots that give motion, and as the print head and the robot are moving, this wet fiber is discharged from that print head where we hit it with the high intensity UV light, and the resin cures from a liquid to a solid instantaneously. It actually cures at up to 10 feet per second. So we're able to print in free space, completely unsupported, as you see on the screen, and it holds its shape. So we're no longer required to design around these molds because it can support itself. There's no mold manufacturing any longer. We no longer need those autoclaves because it's curing right there with UV light rather than a heating process in the autoclave itself. This technology has the capabilities to change the way things are manufactured. We can print with any sort of continuous fiber, whether it's carbon fiber, fiberglass, Kevlar, but we can also print with functional fibers as well. This is a demonstration airfoil that we printed with continuous fiber 3D printing technology. We printed the structure of this airfoil using structural fiberglass. We also printed continuous copper wire right into the part, showing that we can print circuits to power electronics right into the composite structure itself. We also printed fiber optics along the skin and terminating them out the edge showing the ability to automate the laying of these advanced fiber optic sensors, which can be used for all sorts of sensing and data collection. We actually have an example in here where we printed a full-scale boat rudder fully embedded with these advanced fiber optic sensors that allowed that rudder to be able to uh, sense and react to environmental stimuli that people could apply to it. So it could measure changes in temperature or the flow of the water going past it. Uh, so you can make mechanical adjustments to the airplane or to the boat in real time based on the sensing that's happening. We also printed nichrome wire along the leading edge here, which when you put power to it, it generates heat for anti-ice application. So now we can embed anti-icing into aircrafts or wind turbine blades to keep them from icing up. This technology is going to enable autonomous vehicles, um, unmanned aircraft, and all sorts of you know, other applications. So effectively, what continuous fiber 3D printing does is it combines the power of the materials found in composites, which is very lightweight yet extremely strong, 
with all of the advantages of a 3D printing process, being able to create something from the digital world to the physical world very quickly, but so much more. You can now use this type of technology for printing very small, low-cost parts, all the way up to entire aircrafts or buildings. It can be used for manufacturing production parts or prototyping. It has so much potential in the size or in the uh, scale that we can manufacture with or with the materials. And we certainly see a day where this technology is being used to print a hypersonic aircraft fully embedded with all of the wiring and sensing required or morphing wings that take the aircraft and optimize it for every stage of flight, fully embedded with all of the sensing capabilities, or a supercar fully customized to the user's liking, or wind energy, bringing wind energy to the mass markets. This technology is going to democratize composites into industries that aren't even currently using composites. This is being developed right here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and this patented technology is the future of manufacturing. That's why this continuous fiber 3D printing is the start of the next industrial revolution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.